Hi, my name is Jim Hessen. I'm the coordinator of academic technology here at the Baylor School of Social Work. Uh, this video is going to show you how to use Jabber after you have already installed Jabber onto your computer and have an account set up with a username and password. Cisco Jabber is a form of video conferencing similar to Skype. One difference is that uh, Cisco Jabber is an encrypted form and it also separates the audio and video into two separate files so that if your connection begins to fail it'll drop the video out and continue with the, a strong audio signal so that you can continue your conversation whereas a system like Skype where they're tied together you would begin to lose both and uh, that it would be harder to stay connected that way. So um, if you already have it installed um, on a Mac you will go to your applications folder and you will open up Jabber Video. Um, if you don't have it already on your dock, you can drag it from your Applications folder onto your dock. I use it a lot, so mine is there. Go ahead and close this Applications folder. Leave up this Jabber sign-in window. I've typed in my username, and my password um, is there already. And I'm going to sign in. Now you have this search box. Um, with I have my name at the top, and go ahead and click here in the search box where it says type name, number, or address, and that's how you will place calls using Jabber. If I want to place a call, um, I can type in somebody's name. Um, Nikki is one of my coworkers here. I'm going to type in her name, and her name pops up here in the search box. Um, I can click once on her name, and it tell me that she is online. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call her in just a moment. Before I do that, though, um, I'm going to show you a few things. And if you're using a Mac, and I go up here on the top, and there's a job of video that says Quick Setup. I'm going to click on that real quickly. And it brings up some tests for us. Uh, the first one is a microphone on my Mac. I only have the one. And when I talk, you'll notice that the green bar is moving. Most of it stays in this range here, so I know it's working well. Second one is my speaker output. Again, I only have the normal speakers tied in. I'm going to push play here. And if I can hear that, then I should be able to hear audio over the Jabber system as well. Over here, my video, I will select a camera. Um, it picks one automatically for me. If I can see myself there, it's working fine. So now I'm going to click next down here at the bottom and it's going to show me uh, a few other things that I really don't need to worry about these ones at the top. It's this expected outgoing video quality that I'm really looking at. Uh, mine's pretty high. I'm plugged in and mine's medium. Medium's a good strength for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. If yours was a low quality video, um, you may try plugging into uh, either your uh, Ethernet cable like your desktop or move close to a router if you are on a uh, laptop that you're trying to do this wirelessly. Um, so before I call um, my friend Nikki, I'm going to click on this little icon at the top. I hover, um, put over that, that's a self view. It's going to bring up my video and it'll let me see myself again. And I probably want to do that before I make a call so that I can adjust my screen so that I'm centered. Um, probably not a good idea to sit right in front of a window with light coming in. It'll make your face pretty dark and hard to see. Um, you can also notice that I'm wearing headphones at this time. That helps cut out some of the feedback that might happen um, and also allows you to hear, um, especially if you have a group of people who are jabbering together. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click out of this window and I'm going to try uh, Nikki and see if I can get her. Press that start button, and she's having an accept or decline button appear on her computer. Hopefully, she'll put it. Hi, Nikki. Um, I'm recording this uh, for a demo right now. Um, my icons just appeared here underneath my chin when I, underneath your chin on there when I. Um, Put my cursor there and you just notice that they disappear if I move somewhere else. I'm going to click this first one and there's my self view. 
pops up again so I can still see what I'm doing. I can click and drag that to a different part of the screen if I need to get out of the way, or click back on it to turn it on and off. Um, the other icons here, turn off my camera, turn off my microphone, and adjust my volume. I suggest leaving that one alone and just using your normal keyboard uh, volume controls. Uh, this other one moves it to full screen, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then this last one does a sharing presentation. Um, right now I have a Word document up already on my computer, so it's showing here. I'm going to click on that, and it shows here in a little window, which again I can move around, and Nikki should be able to see that on her end. Can you see that, Nikki? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on that again, and I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, is there any documents that you might have open that you'd be willing to share with us for just a minute so we can see what that looks like? Okay, thanks. And now Nikki is, her video is still there, but it's smaller and her document is there. And Dick, Nikki, if you'll like move up and down or you know, maybe type something just so we can see that it is a live document. Yeah, that's great. And we could do the same thing with uh, a website or um, PowerPoint, although PowerPoint does have some limitations on a Mac. You can't actually go into presentation mode at this time. Um, all right, thank you, Nikki. You can stop uh, sharing that presentation. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. All right, I'm going to hit this end button. The call is ended. I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard and it reduces my screen. Click on this red X and it gets rid of my video. <clears throat> now in Cisco Jabber there are two ways to make a call. There's one where I'm just calling a person like I just did with Nikki by typing in her name. Sometimes I have a group of people that I want to contact and we all want to come in together. For something like that a, a virtual room has to be requested and assigned and then a, a time frame is assigned to that as, as well as a call-in number. Uh, most of the ones that we use here at the School of Social Work start with four nines, so I'm typing those in. And then you'll notice um, underneath here several different numbers appear. Um, ours also then have 811, and that's our address, uh, we're at 811 Washington Avenue. And then um, so different classes have different numbers assigned after that. So again, I would just click on that, and if I hit start, I would enter that room. Um, I'm just going to try that. Now, nobody has to be on the other side. It tells us we're the first participant, so nobody has to be on the other side. If I have a virtual room set up, I'm calling into that room, and, and anybody else who has this number and has prearranged to enter this room, um, there are only so many spots that Baylor has uh, Cisco Jabber available for at one particular time, so we reserve those spots. But anybody else who has reserved the calling can call in, and then they will enter, and we can see each other through. Uh, this virtual classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and end. And that takes me out. Um, I did want to go over a few of the best practices and some troubleshooting. Um, it's good, always a good idea to do a test connection. Um, if you're a first time user or if you move to a new location where your signal may be uh, different, it's a good idea to um, contact me or um, somebody else using Cisco Jabber just to test out your connection and see how that works. Um, I would also suggest using your uh, sharing cell phone numbers with anybody in your group so that if your connection wasn't working or you forgot the call-in number, that you can call quickly and um, share those. Um, make sure you go through that quick setup. Again, if you move to a no new location, it's a good idea to check that out. Um, check your cell view before you call. Try to avoid sitting in front of a window. We've talked about those things. Um, plugging into an internet connection, ethernet connection, or moving close to a router. Um, also, always a good idea to plug into power. You don't want to lose um, battery power it, before your call is finished. Um, close any programs that you're not going to be using. If you do think you'll be sharing your presentation, you might want to go ahead and leave that open so that your um, share presentation in Jabber can find that and share that. Um, again, I would uh, suggest trying to use the same location each time. Every time you change locations, it affects um, how the connection will be. So that if you stay in one location, It'll work uh, best that way. Use headphones if possible. If you're with a group, you might want to mute yourself if you're listening for a while, and then un unmute your microphone um, to talk. It just cuts back on some of the feedback and extra noise. 
Um, also, if you're going to be sharing a presentation, it's not a bad idea to test that ahead of time and make sure it works. Um, and then remember a couple other things, like if you're going to um, have a meeting, it's probably going to take about five minutes to make sure everybody's situated. I'm just like everybody finding a chair in a, in a meeting in a, in a real situation, in a virtual world when people call in. You want to, you know, maybe plan to spend the first five minutes making sure people are calling in and have a good connection. Um, and then if you do have some problems, um, if your signal isn't strong, something freezes, it's a good idea to go ahead and just quit out of Jabber and uh, try, to, try to call back either the person or the virtual room, whichever way you get it. And I hope that was a, a helpful demonstration of how Cisco Jabber works.